And uh, Bernard Abler has joined me. He's a general manager of CTFM. Some people call him Alofsky. You know, you know that United play Liverpool on Thursday? They, they use the second team today against Leicester. And, and we got beaten. Because of their evil intentions. Oh, you mean their are, are intentions to destroy Liverpool? They will lose the league, but they don't want us to qualify for the Champions League. Ah, so you, if Liverpool lose, the Champions League becomes difficult. It's tough. Uh, and, and United want to ensure that they don't even get yes. there. Okay, so you pray for them. They, we don't even need prayer. <laughs> That's enough motivation for us. Long time, Aloski, long time. You, have a, you had a busy day from 3 o'clock. How did you first hear about this? Ah, I was having lunch, funny enough, with some men. And we had to, so we, we were sitting in the refectory mm -hmm. eating. And then we... About what time was this? 3.15, 3.20. Mm -hmm. And then we, we sensed, so Zoe had gone out to pick a call. Mm -hmm. And we, we sensed some pandemonium outside. And then we saw Zoe running back in. And then we saw... Running? Yes, she was, she was, I will show you the video if, if you should. Yeah. She, she, she wasn't walking, she was, she was in a state of panic. She says, ah, they, they want to arrest me and I'm saying I have to speak to my boss first. So we, <laughs> I got up and I noticed that there was about six policemen or seven with guns. Where? So CTFM and CCTV is two adjacent buildings. Mm -hmm. So the, the alley between the, mm -hmm. the two places. That's where the police were? Yes, and they, the were, ground. they had come into the building from the car park, walked probably about 100 meters. To the TV side? Yes, almost behind the station where we eat. We have a refectory there. Mm -hmm. And they, had, they were led by a plain clothes person. Mm -hmm. So when Zoe came to where I was with some men, and then I stood up and asked the gentleman in plain clothes what the matter was. Because some of the staff and other people had come to sort of, what is going on here? Why are you chasing the lady? Mm -hmm. So it was, it, was, <laughs> it was quite a disconcerting scene. So we managed to speak to the people and say, what is going on? They said, we are here to arrest her or invite her to whatever. And then we asked what it was about. And they explained that she, her phone had some content that they needed. Mm -hmm. So at this point, Samir says to them, look, calm so down. At this time, they, they haven't mentioned Caleb. Well, we knew, from, we, had, we knew that Caleb had been picked up or he had been arrested somewhere. How did you hear that? Richard Mensah told me. That's what? That Caleb is with Nasha. Richard Mensah is the news editor. He's the, uh, he's the head of television. Head of television, yes. okay. So he told you that Caleb had been arrested. He says, yes, Caleb has been detained mm -hmm. at National Security. For what? And he's trying to get all the details. Okay, okay. okay. So then this incident happens, mm -hmm. and then the pieces are falling together. Okay. Okay. So we, we asked what their mission was after we, we calmed them down, and they say they have come for Zoe because her phone has possession of some video that Caleb took. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't even know where Caleb was because I didn't send him on any assignment, so it was a bit confusing. We said, well, we would have to come with her ourselves mm -hmm. because they had guns, and there was, it was a bit scary. Mm -hmm. because they, they drove in in a very rash way, parked the cars in a very interesting way, jumped out of the car, walked in. Funny enough, when they came, Zoe was on the phone. I don't know how they knew her. Later on, we found out that Caleb was one of the pickups. Oh, Caleb so, was in there. So what happened was they had brought him to City to identify, and he was in handcuffs. Oh, I yes. see. So this was, and I'm, so we, we are now seeing, oh, so Caleb is in their vehicle as well, because initially he was in the vehicle. But you couldn't talk to him? We did talk to him, but so we said, look, if you want Zoe, then you have to take all of us with, with her. So Samens drives his car with me, Richard Mensah, and Anna Seydou, our security correspondent, with Zoe in the car. In uh, Samens's car? Yes, and we okay. say, you go, we'll come. So you drove behind them or? Well, they left. We know where they were, so we went ourselves. Okay, so they left and they were expecting you to come. In fact, when they got to one of the junctions, they waited so okay. that we sort of followed them mm -hmm. in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we go in there and first we met Azugu. Well, the famous one. Yes, so okay. then he says... He had authorized them to come mm -hmm. to bring Zoe. Mm -hmm. And then he complained about what Caleb was doing on their premises. What did he say Caleb was doing? He says he was filming some cars at the car park of the National Security Establishment. So there are two buildings. Mm -hmm. The ministry and then at, at another building which is not labeled. Mm -hmm. This is Blue Gate area. Yeah. So there were some cars in a shed. Mm -hmm. that he was filming and running commentary on his phone. I think he was recording it and saying something. Oh, he was saying some things. Yes. But what was Caleb doing at National Security? Your statement said he went to visit somebody. So w well, we later found out that he had gone there to do... I, we didn't send him there, mm -hmm. to be honest. It wasn't an assignment. Okay. So I think he had gone to film some vehicles which had been abandoned. So That's the purpose for which he went there? Yes. Okay which we found out after we spoke to him when we okay. got there. Okay. So the, 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 the vehicles had been, 
uh, were under some shed. Mm -hmm. So this is at the other side of the car park. And he mm -hmm. was filming the vehicles and sort of talking about cars having been left there mm -hmm. or something. So they said they found out that he had unlawfully filmed those things and sent the video to Zoe. On his, oh, okay, so they took Caleb's phone. Yes. And then they found out that the videos had been sent to Zoe. Yes. Okay. So this is how come they came with him to come and pick up Zoe in that Rambo style. Mm. So we, we, we spoke to, and we also but said... how was Caleb filming? Was he filming secretly? Was he standing somewhere? Was he hiding? From our understanding, it wasn't secret because he was... I think they all knew what he was doing. Or I, I don't know, but from what they said, they said they saw him doing it. Mm -hmm. So and if you look at how open the place is, I don't know. So they saw him doing it, then they arrested him. Because you see, I haven't seen the video of Caleb in the act. Okay. What, okay. what I have seen is what he filmed. Which essentially oh, okay, okay, are cast okay, okay. in a shed. So okay, okay. I don't know the manner in which he did it, but yeah, okay, from, okay, from what we were point. told, they, he was in an open place so they could see him. Mm -hmm. But that place is supposed to be, according to them, mm -hmm. as a restricted security zone. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't hiding his camera. I, don't, I do not think he was. I think he was holding the phone because but I haven't seen the film, but I've seen what he filmed. So okay. it was very brief. All right. So they arrested him. Yes. Uh, most likely then took him inside yes. and asked him, What are you filming for? Something like yes. that. Yes. Then they found out that he had sent it to Zoe. Yes. So then let's go and pick Zoe. Which is sh shocking because if Caleb identifies us as a journalist from CTFM and you want Zoe to talk to her, you can call anybody. How did say, CTFM first know Caleb was in the possession of national security? Who, who told Richard who? Mensah told me. Who told him? He had been called by Azugu. Who happens to know of him? I think he knows Richard Mensah. Ah, so he had called Richard Mensah. Yes. And, and that means he had identified... Or Caleb had said he works with CTF. Fantastic. And so he called him and said, we have your Caleb with yes. us. And Richard says, then I will come there. Okay. And then he says, you don't need to come. According to, at, at least, I, because if, if, because Richard's intention, and Richard told me that he was prepared to go there. Yeah. Okay. So we didn't know they were coming. Ah, uh, but they asked Richard not to come. Presumably. Okay. Because okay. he would have then gone. Because I can't, okay. I, I don't know what comes Okay, so Richard then told you that Caleb is in the possession of these people. Yes. But he was waiting for more information. Yes, exactly. So you were also waiting for more information Then from we would Richard. then see what we can do to go there. So okay. we were completely taken aback by their coming in without us knowing they were coming. So what shocked me is, number one, you know Richard, you know us. Mm -hmm. You want to talk to Zoe. You have a contact with City. Mm -hmm. She's a reporter with us. Caleb is a reporter with us. Mm -hmm. So... If you want Zoe or you want to talk to Zoe, you can do it without... They can ask you to bring her. Yes, so three And she should come with her phone. Three pickups, at least seven men, uniform with guns. So what, what are we seeing? What was what what this film? Uh, let, let's put the film up completely now. So this is um, their entry. This is, of course, CCTV capturing this. Their entry, um, walking in. So Zoe mm. is standing... She's not... This is our security people and a few onlookers. Okay. So then I think... The Caleb is in one of the pickups. Where are the pickups? There's the whitish one, the thing? white one there, okay. there's another one next yeah, there. Yeah, okay. And there's a third one that came to the left side. Okay. Then they see Zoe. I think one of them who is not uniformed approaches Zoe and attempts to take her. Forcibly. Forcibly. Yes. And then she says, No, why, why are you what what do you want me for? <laughs> so see, she ran to where we were. So we were inside. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then a lot of the people, the motley crowd that was there, followed the security people and inside. inside. Okay. So it was, it was like a minute or two before we said, look, what's going on? Why are you here? What do you want with Zoe? And then we said, okay, if Zoe you want, then let's come with her, but you can't take her this way. So I don't know if it's another part of the film, but the, this is, yeah. I don't know whether, where, which narration, but this is essentially what happened. Mm. So it, okay. it was, it was so, quite, it was so, quite so, so you got to national security. Then what happened there? We met with Azugu, who sp told us why he did what he did. Mm -hmm. Of course, with Samens said the way they came was not the best. Samens told Azugu that. Oh, yes. So who were in this meeting? Well, there were two meetings. The meeting we went to was with Azugu because he ordered the people to come in. Okay, who was in that meeting? You and Samens and, and then the plain clothes. Uh, police person who led the team mm -hmm. to come in there. So it was a very brief meeting. So where was Zoe at this time? She was with us all throughout. In the meeting? Yes. So when you got there, they didn't say bring her? No, we went with her. So we went. I get it. So where was Caleb? He, we, he was with them because they, he, he was in their car. Okay, so give me this now. You all arrive at National Security Car Park. You all get down from the car. Yes, but we got there after they had gone. 
So they, oh, they got there yes, before Yes, because you. they came with Caleb and went with him. Okay, so you got there. They are already there. Yes. So you get down from your car. Yes. They are expecting you. Yes. Where do they usher you to? You know, there are two buildings. The main big mm -hmm. building and then there's a smaller building where Azugu's office is. Mm -hmm. So we went there to, to speak to him. Who ushered you in there? The team that one of the police people who came... Okay, said that, come with me. So that is you, uh, Richard Mensah, Zoe Abubedu, and Samalata Mensah. Yes. You all go in there. Yes. Okay. Then you sit down. Yes. He doesn't offer you biscuits and tea. No, he, he apologizes for not being the one to come to city. Oh, I because see. Because he says that he, he, he was a bit indisposed, but he would have come there himself. Okay. And then he also, after we complained about the manner, I think we protested. Okay. I think that's a proper word about the manner the thing happened. He apologized for the way it went. Okay. He says that wasn't his intention. Okay. Because I recall in the interaction with the security people, Samens actually told them that what you are doing is being filmed. So the way you are behaving is completely unbecoming of security people mm -hmm. in an era like this. And one of them retorted that he did not care. Oh, this at CTFN? Yes, so when we got to Azugu, Samen told Azugu that one of your people said this. Mm -hmm. And I told him that the way you are going about this is not the way to go about it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So he did, and Azugu said, oh, sorry, this is not how we intended it to go. Okay. So then he says, they have to uh, take the phone, ask Zoe a few questions and remove the information because they did not think that it was an authorized filming. So okay. then they then go to another building where they say they have to meet a superior and talk to him. So Zoe and Caleb then go to that building. So you don't go with them? No, because we are not... Okay, so Zoe and Caleb are ushered into that building. Yes. You are asked to wait? Yes. All right. And then she comes back with her phone. How many minutes? So this is probably 45 minutes. Oh, that's long. Yes, 45 And you, you Samens and Richmond, are waiting? We were chatting with a lot of people. So it, it's a busy place. So you see, this place is now a ministry and then the National Security Building together. Okay. So you see people you know. There are people coming in and out in the car park. Mm -hmm. So you're chatting with people. Okay. While okay. That so it wasn't boring? No, it was not. And it wasn't scary? What happened at City was scary. Yeah. yeah Actually, know. what happened at National Security was not scary at all. What happened at City was serious. I mean, I guess the, the place we went to they are aware of who we were, and this was a place where you have the highest levels of professionalism. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that was very normal. What happened at City was traumatic for a lot of the staff mm -hmm. because it was, and in fact, there were other Raka people who also came to, to support. Me, I know. You know, Charlie, I remember City. I mean, if you're so, if I'm, I'm laughing, but I was serious. I mean, I can imagine. I've never no, for seen... Zoe, Zoe herself, yeah, the I've, way you said she ran yeah, back. I mean, that and, would be scary. I, and for me, the fact that you know, I mean, so, okay, if you're going to arrest somebody who's killed somebody, how are you going to do it? Because if, if you're going, if you're going to pick that's the phone, Zoe a with a phone mm. with three pickups and seven people with guns, then imagine mm. if you're going to pick, you know, so it, it was very disconcerting and completely unwarranted. Mm. The, it was completely unwarranted, honestly. So 45 minutes time, she comes back. Yes. Then what does she say? And then you? they say they have to finish with Caleb, and then they'll release him for us. So we send Zoe back to the office, and then they say, okay, now Caleb is ready, so you can come for him. You send Zoe to... Back to... You the, go with her yes, to because, city. Yes, So you leave Caleb because there. Because we brought her, so we have to take her yes. back. You leave Caleb there. Yes. Did you interact with Caleb at that time? Yes. Uh, what did he tell you? So, Samen spoke to Caleb, mm -hmm. in, in, not in my presence. Okay. You know, so he spent some time talking to him, mm -hmm. and told him that we'll come back for him. Okay. And then... Richard Mensah then goes and brings him back what around 7.15. So he, 7 o'clock is when he's released. He gets to the office at 7.15. He's called that he can now come. Oh, oh yes. Richard Mensah is called Multiple that people are calling okay. that. So did, did he come with his phone or have they taken his phone? He came him? with everything. Okay. Have they deleted the video on his phone or was he asked to delete the video? Yes. So he deleted? I guess so. I haven't seen the phone but I was... Have really you spoken to him, Caleb? Caleb was very traumatized. So what we said to him was that Go and take a shower and go and rest. Because he wasn't... Even if he doesn't want to take a shower, he should take a shower. He has to. Because, <laughs> it, I mean, think about it. He got there around 2.30, from what we know now. Mm -hmm. They came with him around 3.30, which is an hour. We went with Zoe around 3.45 to 4. Spent almost an hour there. In fact, when we left, it was around 5.30. Sunday, Saturday, Eyewitness News. Mm -hmm. When we got back to the office, around 5.45. Okay. And then Caleb is released at 7. So look at the time span. Yeah. So it's it's... At least five hours. So did, it's it's. It, did, did they rough him up? He 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 looked 
disoriented, but he was, you know, Caleb is quite, um, what's the word to use? He's very jovial. jovial. So he, he sort of um, smiled and, you know, probably trying to downplay the seriousness of mm. what he had been through. But being an experienced journalist, I could tell he wasn't in a, Himself, good, he yeah. wasn't a good way. Mm. He didn't have any physical marks on him or anything, but I think the whole experience shocked him because he was put in handcuffs. And Paul, the, the other thing is, look, fine, he's filming cars at the National Security Institute for establishment, but there's also proportionality and good sense, okay? In, this is the era of 2021. So if, if this is how you are going to arrest and essentially drive him in handcuffs back to his office, pick up his colleague and go back for this, okay? What signal are you sending? And why are you, why are you doing it that way? Who, who are you trying to please? What are you trying to say? So for us as journalists in this era, we are not saying journalists should not be touched. We are not saying we should not uh, face the full rigors of the law. But there is a signal you send with your actions. And Paul, the other, what makes this whole thing very perplexing is the context. Here we are with a, an online movement. Here we are with a lot of anger in the system that people are trying to address. Finance minister had a meeting on, you see. Now, the, the other backstory is that because of, in fact, the original story that went out was that, you know, on Sunday, May 9, the uh, Fix Ghana had planned to do a protest. So Caleb had been sent, Caleb went there to do a filming of what happened. So the police had come there with their, mm -hmm. their, their artillery or whatever they had. Yeah. And he had put this on social media. So the initial report was that he had been arrested because of that. Yeah, that's what Javier Sosu, the Madina M.P., put on his social media. And a lot of people presumed that to be the case mm -hmm. because that video had a lot of likes Traction. and was shared. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then, so it was later on that we realized that he had gone to the National Security for a different thing, which then led to this. But I feel the, 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 the approach was not right. The, the level of bravado was disproportionate, and then the, it didn't take into, con uh, into cognizance the context. Mm. Okay, so now it's, it's escalated it into, a lot of the guys were very traumatized around the station. Does Azuku's apology to you sort of ameliorates the situation? You know, I, I, I don't, it's not about me and what I think, because some of us, because we are known, we are privileged. So if they see you or me, it's, oh, Bernard, oh, Paul. But Caleb is a young journalist, as is Zoe. And there are lots of people watching. So you don't need to apologize to me. Do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And we, we are not saying we shouldn't do that. We shouldn't be punished for doing wrong. So it's not about Bernard or Samens being told. Why did sorry. they have him in handcuffs when they were with him in the car? I have no idea. I think that's bad. I'm, I don't know whether... I they mean, were they were with him. He couldn't have escaped. Yes. Which is why I'm saying that. So why was he, why was he in handcuffs? You, you need to ask them. Yeah, that's, that's, that's terrible. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's left a very sore taste in the mouth because mm -hmm. it's... it's it's, it's disoriented a lot of us, mm. you know, but... And especially the one who retorted and said he doesn't care about... Yes, but, but we told his superior that this is what he said. But you don't know his name, so... We how? did not know his name, but he knows the people he sent, and there were about seven or eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if he wants to... But he wouldn't know which one. Well, they have to own up. <laughs> the, the way they get information from us, they can get from their own people. If they are minded to deal with that issue, because mm. I feel... You see, here is the managing director of a company in his space urging you. He kept telling him to calm down. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. so it's, it's, and Paul, anything could have happened because those people who came in there somewhere. No, Zoe could have collapsed. Yes. Somebody's uh, gun could have gone off accidentally. Hey, that would have been brutal. Because they were holding cock guns. Oh, really? I'm telling you. Mm. So it, it was, it was, and it, <laughs> it was very serious. Mm. Yeah, so it was, it was, it was Rumble style without embellishing it. It was Rambo style. We so we unreservedly condemned the police reaction in picking up the journalist from CTFM. A lady as well. It was disproportionate. And they knew it was a lady they were coming to pay? Yes. Ah. It was disproportionate. It, it was unmerited. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So what do you advise journalists to do? You, you are a journalist of the year. What, what should they do and what should they not do? Look, we have to be fair to the facts. Speak the truth. Okay? Our... Our job is a discipline of verifying things, okay? It's a discipline of verification. So we are not doing uh, hearsay. Sometimes in trying to verify, you get information. 
and evidence to make a point. There are ways you have to go about that. If you err, you have to be corrected. If you break the law, the law has to take its course. But people must feel they are free to do their work because we are the fuel of democracy. The fourth estate, right? The three estates, you explained that a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. right? So we, sh we, we should not feel intimidated or harassed. That doesn't mean we are special people, but we are useful for governance. So if a lot of the things you do in educating people, the population can easily be governed if journalists put out the right information. So they shouldn't be seen as enemies of the state. They should be encouraged and corrected when they go wrong, but not are treated like this. Handcuffs it, it, whilst you're in a police car. Completely unwarranted. Did they say any things to Caleb uh, abusive, do you know, yet? We will have to speak to him because, mm -hmm. you see, when you see the state of somebody, this is not the time for another debriefing. Mm -hmm. You get me? He's a young person. So somebody has to send him to a place to relax and recover mm -hmm. because you also don't want to damage him so he can't do his job. He's a promising guy, he's a brilliant guy, yeah, goes yeah. to the back. Page, the back page, yeah. That's around town. Mm -hmm. we, we, two things. You don't want to punish people's inquisitiveness, mm. but they also have to learn to do it within the rules. It's a balance we have to strike. And I also think the state should send the right signal that we believe that your space is protected. You know, I spent some time with President Kufo a few weeks ago. Yes, yes. I and he explained that. to me why he repealed the criminal liability. law. He actually corrected me when I said he did it in a second. He said, I did it in my first year. Yeah, it was. And then he was talking about the importance of media for Africa's development mm. to change minds. So you can't send a signal like that and then two days later come like commandos to a radio station to pick up a lady for receiving so yeah. I mean, I mean you know, for receiving a video. So so if somebody sends me a video I should, I should repel it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It's it's just disproportionate and completely unwarranted, honestly. Mm. Honestly. It, it's it's you know. we'll see what the police uh, directors of public relations will say uh, from tomorrow going. Okay, what's on point of view tomorrow, by the way? I don't even know. Because people don't understand that we don't get to know that until the last minute. Even I didn't know I was coming here until I don't know how many <laughs> minutes before you called. So you have to be current. It's yeah. very important. So, but thank you for having me. Thank you for allowing us to explain yeah. what, what happened. It's, it's a real pleasure.